one of us needs to admit one thing. One thing. Amongst so many other things. The one thing we need to admit is we are trying hard to achieve the pleasure of Allah, aren't we? Every one of us. No matter what level we're on today, wouldn't you like tomorrow to be a better day? If the answer is yes, my brother, my sister, you're heading in the right direction. If the answer is no, we have much more to improve on, inshallah. Let's hope the day comes sooner rather than later. So we all would like to improve. Every one of us wants to improve ourselves. We want to change for the better, don't we? There are two main ways of changing. One is to change instantly. Take a look at Iyad Al Qadi Iyad, Rahimahullah. It's reported that he used to engage, he himself says, he used to engage in little stealing and pinching and robbery. And one day he decided, let me go and pray. So as he entered the masjid, he heard the verses. Beautiful verse where Allah is explaining how important it is for people to change. Has the time not come for those who are believers? For their hearts to be softened towards the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has that time not come? Question. And then Allah continues to say, don't be like those who forgot Allah, who left it for a while until their hearts became hard. When I want to change and I tell myself tomorrow I will change. That's already giving shaitan so many hours to play on our minds. By the time tomorrow comes, we'll say one more day. When that one day passes, we say, okay, next week. Then we'll say, I'm only 16. It's called sweet 16. When I get a bit sour or stale, then I might turn. May Allah protect us. Brothers and sisters, you are as sweet as you are, even if you're 40. Subhanallah. So we need to know this and we need to remember. Shaitan makes us wait. Just hang on. We'll change just now. This man says, as soon as he heard the verse, he began to cry and he promised Allah, never again will I go back to my ways. Never again. Not at all. Imagine this was such a beautiful turning point. And I'm sure from amongst us, there are those who've turned by one verse, one lecture, one reminder, one thing that happened in our lives, we became better people. Sometimes it's the death of someone. Sometimes it's sickness. Sometimes it's an accident. Sometimes it's failure. And sometimes it is success that makes us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah to make us from those who can turn to him. But there is another way of turning. Gently, Change one by one things in your life and improve yourself as the days pass. And this is how I started the talk. As the days go by, you're changing one after the other. And every day you're so happy, you look back and you say, I moved one inch. MashaAllah. Wallahi. Before you know it, you'll have moved a mile. And before you know it, you'll cross the continents. And before you know it, you get into the Akhirah in a way that your bridge to paradise is made and built. SubhanAllah. May Allah grant that to us. So I want to today concentrate on the second type of change. The first one is there. I hope it has happened to us. And I hope even if the major change has come, we all believe that we still need to improve. None of us, not a single one of us can say, not a single one of us can say that now I'm okay. I'm enough. Whatever I've got to is okay. I'm a big buzurug. You know, I'm a big pious saint. And that's it. Now I can just look at everyone else and instruct them and dish out. No, if that's the case, shaitan's got hold of us. We need to understand every one of us. Every one of us needs to improve from the level you're on. And this is why I've given the example in the past. And I want to say it again. Some people have a spiritual BMW. 
Sorry, you know when I said Merc the last time, people thought that that was the car I liked, so I need to say BMW. Not to say I like the car. Wow, it's just a vehicle. Some of them are nice, mind you. So, what happens is some people are on a spiritual BMW motoring down the highway, spiritual highway. MashaAllah, be focused, make dua, you get to your destination as quick. Some people, no. They're in this little vehicle 1960. Now it's become quite fancy, this little Mini Cooper. I think BMW owns it, to be honest with you. Yes, they bought it over. Wow, we know quite a bit, mashallah. So they're in this little car and they're tagging along slowly, slowly. The one who wins is the one who's dedicated and focused. Because if you're in a BMW cruising at 100 miles an hour, for example, and you lose focus for a split moment because of your mobile phone or anything else, you may spin the vehicle and that's the end of your journey. You'll have to have a huge change before you can actually get back on the path. Whereas if you're moving slowly but surely with a vehicle that might be slower, but you're dedicated, no distractions, and you focused every day covering so many miles, you will finish your journey certainly by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It requires focus and dedication. May Allah grant it to us. So now I'd like to remind myself, I need a reminder, I'm a human being and yourselves. If I want to change, what's a good way of starting? Obviously, we say here and now. Yes, that's right. The intention needs to come here and now. Bad habits need to be flicked off. The very bad habits completely eradicated. No space for them. But sometimes people do not provide us with practical solutions. I live a life. I've got to go to work. I see this. I, this happens to me. That happens to me. So how do I go about it? You know how to start off? One of the most important things. Sleep on time. Wow. Did you know that? One of the most important things when you want to change your life is to sleep on time. is quiet because we're in the UK and the sun only sets after nine o'clock wow. see sleep on time if you sleep on time you will get up fresh early morning in time for what you are supposed to get up for and what is that what is that what is that some are saying work some are saying Fajr some are saying Tahajjud wow I didn't hear anyone say breakfast When the eye opens, what's the first thing you should do? You want to change your life? Relate the opening of your eye to the giver of that life. Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana. Wow, first words came out of my mouth. This is a change. The change starts with this consciousness of Allah. That's how it starts. So one might say, okay, you know what? I'm changing from today. I'm growing my beard. I'm changing from today. I'm covering myself fully, top to bottom. Good change. But... If you're not conscious of the maker with that beard, you will still insult. With the good dressing, you will still insult. But when you're conscious of the maker, it's a holistic approach to the correction. This is why we say as soon as your eye opens, first thing, tomorrow morning, remember this, you set your clock. As soon as it rings, I hope you set a clock that rings. Subhanallah. At the right time, neither the breakfast nor the work. Inshallah, at least for the Fajr. Soon as the eye opens, what are you going to say? All praise is due to he who gave me this life. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahiyana. All praise is due to he, to Allah, who has given us this life after he had taken it away. You know the description of sleep. If you start your day with that dua, good news to you. What is to follow will be far more spiritual. It will be far more rightly guided. Your day has started on the right side, mashallah. And then you get up. I'm sure you've seen the clip where I spoke about lifting that blanket up, you know, makes you strong. When I was coming here, one of my relatives was telling me about a six pack, you know, boasting. I said, look, brother, normally the airlines that I travel on, they allow one big pack. So I don't waste my time. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, six pack. Wow. You can have a six pack. It won't help you. If you have that laziness in you, it's not going to let your blanket be lifted off with your strength. It requires the inner strength 
even if you have one big pack, mashallah. And I'm not promoting that because it's very unhealthy. So brothers and sisters, are we ready? Inshallah, we start off, we get to bed early, get up in the morning. These are practical lessons. You know, one might think oh, I came all the way to listen to how to get up in the morning. Wallahi, it's a fact. Yes, you did. You did. And if you practice upon it, you will see the benefit of it. Believe me, the problem with us, it's very easy to tell. Please don't do it to me. If you know my mobile phone number, do not do what I'm about to say to me. Okay. You can check when last they were online. WhatsApp. Oh, this guy tells us to sleep early. Look at him. Two in the morning. It's not me. It's automatic. Allah make it easy. Why do we get caught with our mobile phones at night such that we sleep late, we get up groggy, we've missed our salah. You know what happens when you've missed your fajr? Then one narration says, shaitan pees in your ears. You need to be disciplined and so do I. May Allah protect us. May he grant us the discipline. Put it, block it, close it off. Someone needs you, you've got a landline. Subhanallah, they'll phone you. Now that you've slept well, the way you said Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana and the way you've read your prayers and your dua, supplications of early morning, so blessed that you feel like a nice, good, spiritual person who's ready to spend that day in the best way possible. Then you start with your early morning prayer. You, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, you've started your prayer, declaring the greatness of Allah, putting your head on the ground for your maker. Early in the morning, you've washed up. And this is how spiritual your day is. Get up on time so you do not need to rush your prayer. And say a few words of praise of your maker. Tasbih. Try that out. Believe me, I am telling you, if you try this, you will see the difference in your life. Contentment, happiness, goodness. You're praising your maker, the giver of your life. Wow, subhanallah. This is why the Prophet ﷺ taught one of his wives, may Allah peace and blessings be upon all of them. He says, were you seated here from the time I left for Fajr? And now that I've come back after the sun has risen, continuing, continuously praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, yes. He said, let me teach you four words. If you were to repeat them thrice, the reward of the repetition of those four words thrice will be far greater than anything that you've said in this entire time. What are those four words? Do you know them? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. That is the word multiplied by four different statements. What are the statements? Adada khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zinata arshihi wa midada kalimatihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Praising Allah. Adada khalqihi. The number of his creatures. Wow, he's got countless creatures. I multiply the praise of Allah that I'm declaring by the number of his creatures and multiplied until he is pleased with that multiplication until he's happy. Subhanallah. And the weight of his throne. Wow. How that must be. He alone knows. And stretched as long as all his words or his signs. Amazing. Amazing. You say those words just before sunrise. See what happens. You've praised Allah. You've praised your maker. And then we need to learn something else. When we praise Allah, try and think of what you're saying. Don't just utter words that you don't know the meaning of, although they will have an effect, but the effect is not maximized unless and until you're concentrating and you know the meaning of these words. At least you understand roughly what you're saying. Subhanallah. You know, you make it a routine. We need to force ourselves off our beds. Yes. We would if we were to go to school or to work. What is work for? To earn a living, to buy a house, to buy a bit of food, to be able to live for another few years until we leave. Thereafter, where's your house after that? You can build that by getting up a few minutes earlier. That's how you build it. So you want to earn 60,000 pounds, for example, going out to work every morning, getting up at a specific time because you know I need 60,000 pounds. And Allah tells you, had you got up 30 minutes before that, you could have earned your paradise. And had you got up two hours before that, you could have almost guaranteed, or should I say, you could have built a far better, bigger place with a higher rank in paradise. That's now tahajjud, one step higher. 
your child got up in the morning first thing they look at you assalamu alaikum or you can add wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may peace be upon you that's the way to greet them even early in the morning to start off with that subhanallah do we do it in our homes let's change that inshallah let's start so much so that even in the evening when you're reclining you greet everyone assalamu alaikum people look at you where are you going i'm going to bed allah make it easy my brothers and sisters yes you greet your child you get up early you say good words you acknowledge the breakfast that is there whether it is a mug of tea or whether it is a little bit more than that or less than that you acknowledge it you appreciate it try your best to have that little meal at least collectively not one not singular in today's world everyone's working different hours everyone's sleeping different hours so we hardly get any family time collectively you thank allah mashallah i see nowadays multitasked people they've got their phone under the scarf you know clicked on they're busy doing something and they're chewing at the same time i don't know how it works but it's reality subhanallah hands free wow if we are to start the meal with bismillah the blessedness of that meal is changed completely positively completely a lot of us eat we munch our food without even thinking we sip our tea and yes i'm talking to myself and yourselves wallahi this is what happens we eat and we have the best of meals people are suffering across the globe and we're busy concerning ourselves and we should be worried about how best to be able to help them humanitarian and so on hence we have alimdad and the others trying to do a lot of good work subhanallah but with us we couldn't even relate the food to the giver of the food bismillah in the name of allah that's the minimum you should say and i should say let's change that come on why i say this is all these things i'm saying make you conscious of your maker hence you become a better person you need consciousness with the change and that starts the time you sleep the time you get up when you get up what's the first words you say what are the first deeds you do and how do you treat the others and when you're putting anything food or drink to your mouth what's the first thing you think of it should be your maker and the giver of that meal and the drink this is practical ways of changing now your day started and then say for example you get into the shower the bathroom for example how long do you take there are you conscious of the other people who live with you how much water do you use are you conscious of the fact that people don't have water there's going to be a water shortage across the globe they say the next war will be in, not about oil but water Allahu Akbar this is what we're reading if you don't waste water you're actually engaging in a spiritual deed if you are conscious of people to use the bathroom after you and clean it up a little bit you are conscious of who you are it's a spiritual deed and this is what the consciousness of Allah starts with when you are conscious of him from the moment you've got up you know you you had a bath subhanallah you put on your clothes what type of clothing have you put on improve it tomorrow improve it as the days pass we're becoming older we're getting closer to Allah we're not getting further away so subhanallah here we are whilst we were dressing we praised Allah we tried to make sure that whatever we've put on will not displease our maker. First thing in the morning, mashallah, you put on your clothing and you looked in the mirror. What came to your mind? Ah, that dude's going to look at me and say, wow. Is that what came in your mind? If that's the case, really, we have much more to improve on. We have to think to ourselves, if I were to die today, I pray Allah grants me Jannah. That's a wow. Allahu Akbar. If I were to die today, if this was the last time I was leaving my home, and who knows, there are so many people who've had it such, they've left the home and that's the last time they left. If this was the last time I left my home, what would become of me? That's the question. So now I've dressed, thank Allah. When we're leaving the home, Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allah. In the name of Allah, I lay my full trust in Allah. This is a dua, it's a sunnah, it's taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it has so much blessedness in it. So good. It enhances the spirituality. We are praying that Allah looks after our property whilst we're away, looks after us and looks after the rest of our family as well. Whilst everyone is gone in their different directions. When we come back, Alhamdulillah, Subhanallah. Anyway, we've taken our lunch. We've gone to work. When we are going to work, how do we go? You were either, you know, going by car or by train in this particular country, a lot of people, or perhaps walking even in some cases, maybe biking it and so on. Learn to be courteous on the road. That's the consciousness of Allah. It's a teaching of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
to be courteous on the road. Did you know that? Look at how we started with the sleep and we've moved, combed through what should be happening. This is called a change in your life. If you're a person who's not at all courteous, very impolite on the road, you have to become a better Muslim. You have to become a better Muslim, a better person. So you need to give way. You need to understand. You need to smile. You need to greet. You need to realize and understand whom you are speaking to, whom you are interacting with. These are human beings. They have a right just like yours. You know, if someone comes in or they want to come in and you don't allow them, there may be a time that you want to come in somewhere and they won't allow you. But if you've allowed, you've created a trend. They will allow. Subhanallah. I know some of the youngsters have cash answers and they say, well, I've allowed and they haven't allowed. Well, they are different people, but it will catch. Don't worry. Keep on doing it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What time do you get to work? That's another question. If you want to change your life, make sure you get there five minutes before time. Five minutes before time. Do you know what you must be thinking? You told us five o'clock, you came at six, quarter past six. And you're telling us five minutes before time. Brothers and sisters, I was told quarter past six. That's what I was told. Wow. And I was here on the dot. Wasn't I brothers? Alhamdulillah. You must be saying, why didn't you tell us quarter past six? Well, there you are. At least you're all here, mashallah. It's quarter past six. Let's get back to the five minutes. Five minutes before time, clock in, work, school, wherever you are. Minimum of five minutes. Come on. May Allah make us not people who rush all the time. Once in a while, you may have to, but not every single time. We're supposed to be disciplined. And then we get to work. We haven't stolen the time from work because if you arrived at half eight, for example, and you were supposed to start at eight o'clock, that 30 minute salary is prohibited upon you. Do you know that? Prohibited upon you by right. You should be reimbursing it, returning it or benefit the company according to that amount of wealth somehow. Wow. Unless you go to your boss and you say, I'm sorry. And he says, it's okay. I don't think they'd say it's okay for too long. And then we have a tea time, a tea break. But before I get there, let me say something important. This will relate to every one of us. You get to work, you get to school, you get to wherever you're supposed to get to. You're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing. Do you know what that means? We're busy with the newspaper. And you're supposed to be working. You're busy on the net, doing what? Surfing, checking, the price of vehicles, eBay, and so on. But what's going on? You, your workplace, you're using facilities of your work, you're wasting the time of your workplace. You're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. You're wasting time on chats and Skype and Facebook and Twitter, whatever else it is. It's the wrong time. It is the wrong time. That is your stuff that you're doing during company time. Wow. Imagine if your boss had to hear me. They might be thinking, this guy, we need him here. Man. <laughs> Allah, make it easy. No, I haven't been paid to say that. But it's a fact. We need to be dedicated. Think of ways, improving solutions and so on. Work hard. You have your break. Mashallah, you go out for your break. Again, you remember Allah. Praise Allah during your day. Talk to him a few times during the morning. By praising him, declaring a few words. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah. Ask his forgiveness. Ya Allah, forgive me. Things I know, things I don't know. Scatter all these words. Scatter them through your morning, through your afternoon. Mashallah. Lunch break, if you can come home, you come. If you cannot come home, Alhamdulillah. One of those things, you make sure that whatever you've done is within the pleasure of Allah. Your dhuhr, your midday, just post midday prayer, don't miss it. And try not to delay it. Make a plan somehow. Somehow. Make a plan. That's the word we use. Make a plan. I'm sure we can. Read your salah. You know, people say, I cannot read my salah at work. My brother, if you really want to, you can. I really cannot. No, it's very difficult. As difficult as it is, you can. Where there is a will, they say there is a way. Allahu Akbar. Where there is a will, there is a way. But the minute we feel apologetic, no, I can't, you know, so on. Really, it's tough, you know. Then automatically, the solutions don't come that quick. So we need to understand Dhuhr Salah. How can we miss it? It's Allah. He's given us the time. And subhanallah, the day continues. Let's jump. The time we come home. Yes, perhaps we might be tired. You know, different people come home at different timings. The brothers come home. The sisters come home sometimes. Some, some may not be going to work and so on. But 
typically a person who comes back from work you might be tired you might be you know having had different experiences through your days on a different temperament and mood leave that outside the door you come in with a smile that's a sunnah if it is a sunnah to smile outside to your fellow brothers and sisters what about back at home it's even a bigger sunnah because now it's a double act of worship one is a relation who's so close to you and two is a fellow believer subhanallah the smile and it's there imagine you come home you've had a tough day really bad people have let you down and your face doesn't show it you come home with a smile nobody knows what happened you've got the sparkle in your eyes when you smile your eyes sparkle on their own on their own try it amazing so you come home with a smile you greet with salam you embrace your children your family and so on your spouse do we do that question i think a lot of us are guilty and then we say i'm a good muslim wow a good muslim these are basics that we need to change these are practical steps that we need to take to change our lives this is how your life will change be dedicated when you're at work when you're out of the house or even when you're in the house and you're on the social applications and so on do not be unfaithful no it comes back to haunt you say what you want if you're unfaithful it's a seed of cactus that you've sown the thorns of which shall prick you